Hey, what's up guys? This is Anthony from Anthony's Customs, and for this video, we are looking at the Variable Action Heroes Pokken Tournament Lucario figure, which is probably exciting for most people if you're a fan of Pokemon, because it means we're getting new Pokemon figures from a new brand that's known for making at least pretty decent figures. Normally, the Variable Action Heroes are around 7 inches tall, these guys are significantly smaller, so that might be a good thing if you're trying to mix these guys in with your SH figure arts and D arts and Figma figures for your Smash display. These are going to work out pretty nicely for that. It's got some good things and some bad things. We're going to cover all of it in this video, so let's get it off the stand and take a closer look. And this guy stands just about four, just over four and a half inches tall at the top of his ears which makes him just about 11 and a half centimeters. So like I said, very small for a variable action heroes. And that's where the biggest gripe is for these guys. They're not bad because they're small, but they're pretty expensive for being this small. So that's definitely something to consider when you're looking to buy them. Uh, overall, the aesthetic's pretty nice. We have a lot of sculpt work. He's got fur just about everywhere. He's supposed to have fur. No paint shading really, so that's a bit disappointing, but it doesn't really need it. It still looks pretty nice. And the paint job's flat, so it doesn't look cheap or anything like that, so that's pretty cool. Now, in terms of accessories, we do have quite a few. We have a display stand, which will hold the figure himself. It's got three hinges and the clip just on the top, like basically all of your standard import display stands. We have an upright piece that has four interchangeable uprights, and that's for the uh, energy effects. You have three different lengths and then one bent one, so that's for the charge effect, the actual fireball, and you can interchange them however you want to. And then lastly, we have his uh, staff in terms of weapons and accessories like that, so that's pretty cool. And then in terms of body parts, we have the two hands slash forearms that come on him, which are kind of neutral. We have the two that are in more of like a kung fu pose, and then we have two that are meant for gripping his accessory. Lastly, for the body, we have three sets of interchangeable eyes. We have the neutral eyes, which come on him in the package. We have eyes to the left, and then eyes off to the right. So plenty of interchangeable pieces, and that's pretty cool. So let's go ahead and look at the articulation on the figure. The head is on a ball peg. It will move a little bit, but due to his fluffy little collar, he doesn't have that much play side to side. It will rotate no problem, and then forward and back, it's also fairly limited. It's kind of disappointing how limited it is. These guys are not articulated, so that's kind of a downside, especially in comparison to the previous Lucario figure we got from SH Figure Arts. The shoulders are on a ball peg, where this gray part actually moves around with them, so you can bring them across the chest a little bit, or you can move them back a little bit, and they move up and down some. Then for the shoulder itself, we have the ball hinge, which is pretty standard, and you get really good range out of it. You can bring the arms all the way up to the side, and then you can rotate it all the way around. And you have your bicep swivel there as well. For the elbow, it's just a standard ball hinge, which will swivel at either end, so you do have some posing options. No wrist articulation or anything like that, though it's not entirely necessary. For the waist, as you can see, we just have one giant ball hinge, which I'm not terribly opposed to. I think it's okay. The only thing that is worth noting is that the yellow up here is a little bit more saturated than the ball hinge, and then this one is somewhere in between both of them, so it could look a lot better. But you do obviously have really good range for that, so you can pose him pretty much however you want to, lean him out all the way to the side, do whatever you want, and it's going to work just fine because the hinge has really no limitation. For the hips, we have hinged ball pegs, so you can bring the legs down if you want to. Then we have the ball peg and the socket in there, so you get a little bit of a thigh swivel, but not a whole lot. It doesn't come very far forward unless you drop it all the way down, in which case it comes all the way forward. So that's kind of good. It's not bad. And it does go pretty much all the way out to the side as well once you do that, so the hips are pretty nice. You have a thigh swivel where the gray meets the blue, so that's kind of good. And for the knee, you just have a hinge, and you get very limited range on that hinge. I don't care for that very much. It's very, very limiting. And there's basically a lot less articulation than on the figure arts, and that's not a good thing. So it's very limiting there. And then for the ankles, you have your standard ball hinge. So you can bring the foot back and you can bring the foot forward, which is not terrible. And then you can kind of rotate it a little bit to come down to the side like an ankle rocker, but it doesn't work very well. So that's kind of disappointing, and given the fact that he's got these little tiny feet to begin with, it's pretty hard to get him to balance. You're almost definitely going to need the display stand. And then lastly, we have a ball hinge for the tail, which does work. So ultimately, the figure looks nice, but it's going to be pretty hard to pose in a particularly dynamic way. The knees are almost... You can't use them. They're almost useless. The hips are good, but because the knees are useless, that's going to limit it. And for mine, his right leg 
is farther away from the center of his body than his left leg. You can see that gap right there. It's not, it's not great. I have to say, for the price point and the size, I'm not entirely impressed with this figure. It's not bad by any means, and if you want one that's going to be in scale with your Smash display, then this is probably a good option. But that price point and the size is just not a good combination. So I can't say I'm thoroughly impressed. Let's hope Mewtwo's a little bit better. I, I kind of doubt he will because he's going to be even harder to make good. But we'll see how that goes. So there it is, guys. I, I don't know. It's not the best not the best in the world. If it was a lot cheaper, I'd be a lot more happy with it, but it's not, so I don't know. Anyway, there you go. Thanks for watching, guys. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. I have new videos up every single day. We talk about movies, TV shows, video games, action figures, all kinds of fun stuff. We do live streams on a regular basis, so make sure you tune in for that. And come back for all that other good stuff. And in the meantime, keep collecting.